Welcome back to the first review of 2021, the all new Anning V05B with Bluetooth. Big thanks go to Banggood. Thanks for sending the Anning in for the review. This is completely off the cuff. I'm not being paid to say this. Let me just say though that banggood.com, I'm really liking their service. Really fast delivery, haven't had any issues thus far. And overall, I'm impressed. So hey, Banggood, keep up the good work. Alrighty, let's take off this display cover. Oh yeah, nice, nice. I'm loving the smell of a sweet new Anning. Oh, look at this guy, I'm telling you. Tiny, tiny, tiny. But you know what they say, good things come in small packages, and I think we're in for a good ride. V05B shipped in your standard sort of OEM box. Um, they use this for multiple meters, uh, not just the Annings. I've seen the same packaging for uh, rich meters. And as well, you get a little user manual, really just a pamphlet, not much going on here. Has the basic specs, what have you. Um, better than a kick in the butt, I guess. Uh, yeah. As well, you get your standard OEM style test leads. Uh, yeah, these are rated a 10 amp CAT 2 600 volt. Uh, yeah, pretty small. I prefer a bigger lead as you know, but hey, we'll see how good they perform during this review. All in all, it has a nice little grippy feel, good thumb protector. And the shrouding on the other end, uh, a little on the small side, but once again, this is a pretty small meter. So. Yeah. Three small meters here, uh, two of them are Annings, one of them is a rich meters in the middle. As you can see, they're all the same sort of style. Kind of a new look we saw come out uh, in 2020. Not bad, not bad. Um, if you like smaller style meters, these will definitely ring your bell. Um, now, if we take out the meter of the year, the Hapotest HD118A, what a nice meter. Um, you can see this is really one tiny little test instrument. The Hapotest H2113C on the other side, definitely half the size of the 118, but still it dwarfs the little V05B. So that should give you a good idea of the overall footprint. Okay, it's small, but so what you're seeing? Well, you know, it feels good in the hand. It's definitely nice and chunky, thick. I like the feel. It's nice and solid. You know, you can drop this and I really wouldn't worry about any damage. Um, nice job on the boot. This does come in a few different colors. Um, blue, black, and I believe red or orange. Uh, a ready orange, perhaps. But you do have a choice of colors. Colorful little meter. Let's not forget this is a Bluetooth multimeter. That's right, Bluetooth. It has that standard generic OEM app you can download from the uh, Google Play Store or the um, Apple Store. And uh, you know what, that is one good looking app. It really, really looks nice, performs well. And uh, we'll take a quick look at that as well. Once again, being a smart multimeter, um, it's not the smartest kid on the block. This can only measure voltage or resistance in smart mode. Now you do have an option to do a manual select and from there you can check other functions, but uh, in the smart mode at least, resistance and voltage, that's it. No selector switch on the little Anning. Instead we have a select and NCV button. And on the right we have our hold zero or our backlight. Finally in the middle, yes, that nice big honkin' Bluetooth slash power. And finally at the top here we have a LED which will be active in continuity mode. At the bottom, we have our high current and milliamp on the left. In the middle, we have our common or ground. And finally, on the far right, we have our voltage resistance, capacitance, temperature, diode, continuity, and frequency. On the back of the unit, we have our standing bale or tilt stand. Now look at that, that is pretty darn wide. Yeah, in fact, exact same setup that we can see on that rich meters, for instance, it really goes a long way down that tilt stand. Um, nice fit and finish, really like it. Flashlight, of course, on the back as well. And one Phillips screw to get to the batteries. Little Anning is powered by two AAA batteries. Nice brass threaded insert there and overall easy access. To start the Anning, simply one hold down for two seconds on the power button and we are greeted instantly in auto mode. Once again, auto only allows us to measure voltage or resistance. Once you're in auto mode, look at that screen. Hey, not bad looking, not bad looking at all. Let's pull out that rich meters and just put it side by side. Yeah, identical. 
Now, just for the heck of it, here's the M118A, and you can tell there is a little bit of a difference in terms of the font, not quite as large as the Rich Meters or the Anning, that M118A, but generally speaking, looks pretty well similar right across the board. Backlight is now enabled, and with that backlight enabled, boy, it's even nicer. I'm telling you, pretty crisp, pretty crisp. And it doesn't really matter what angle you're looking at. Oh, we lose it there just a bit when you're overhead at an angle, but uh, generally speaking, not too shabby, not too shabby at all. Now, as gorgeous as that backlight is, do take note that when you turn on the backlight, you are also turning on that flashlight. There is no separate uh, mechanism to do one or the other. You're doing both at the same time. Backlight stays on for about four to five minutes. Um, yeah, it does not stay on permanently, but it does stay on four to five minutes. So, hey, that is much better than going off after 10 seconds. And I think that's really usable and, and, and fair. Now, this is one of the interesting issues with this meter. You can hear that relay clicking. That is um, gonna be happening a lot when you're in auto mode. Starting off now at 2.5 volts. Let's see here. 7.50 and look at that spot on already now we're just going to switch over to 10 volts and 9.99 oh so close looking good sitting so right now around 400 millivolts and the anning m118a on the far right is the only smart multimeter here that can read at this low of a threshold unfortunately the anning v05b cannot read voltage unless it's over 800 millivolts. Sitting at 812 millivolts according to the Siglent power supply and looking pretty darn good. Taking it up now, 900 millivolts, 892, 893, 896. And let's try one volt even Steven. 0.994 for the 118, 0.995 and 0.997 for the rich meters. Okay, up, up and away. Ten point four six volts. Hey, spot on, Mr. V05B. Ten point four six, ten point four seven, and ten point four nine. Loving it. Moving up, up. We're gonna hit forty volts now. And look at that high voltage annunciator coming up on both the rich meters and the Enning. Nothing for the M118A, and we're sitting at forty volts even. Good stuff. Gonna max it now. Right up at 64 volts and look at that we still have no high voltage enunciator on the m118a on the far right but boy is that thing spot on 64 volts even steven 63.9 for the v05b start of the show and on the far left the rich meter is 64.1 wow talk about close now these are all in smart mode right now so uh yeah your mileage may vary but generally speaking Looking good. Boy, that 118 is like awesome. Let's take a quick look at current sitting at 20 milliamps and 18.4 coming up on the Anning. Take it up, up and away. 200 milliamps and 207.4. Now remember, the input jack is shared with the high current, so you're not gonna have to swap that lead uh, when you're into those high amps. Okay, we're gonna just take it all the way here up to one amp solid. 1.05 amps according to the DC power supply, 1.048 for the Anning. Okay, let's max it out now. 3.2 amps and 3.2, hey, looking good, no problem. 10 amp is apparently fused. We will take a look at that when we do the teardown, but overall seems pretty good in the current department. Looking at resistance right now, 100 kilo ohm, make it 110, 111, Looking good. 311, 611, 1.01 mega ohm. Hey, wow, not bad, not bad at all. And remember, this is in smart mode. Something worth noting as well is you cannot switch from auto to manual mode for resistance. So you're basically stuck in the smart mode every time you wanna check out a resistance value. Okay, let's take it up a little bit higher. Five. Four mega ohm right now. Let's bring it up to seven mega ohm, nine mega ohm, and ten mega ohm. 
Yeah, nice and fast. All around, hey, pretty good for a smart multimeter. Yeah. You know what? You're not so dumb after all. Finally, let's try this 15K 1% precision resistor. And that's nice and fast. Awesome. Now, don't forget, this does have that amazing Bluetooth. Really simple to get to. Turn the meter on. Once it's on, you just lightly tap that Bluetooth button. You see it flashing right now. Download the software. In this case, it's from the Google Play Store. Gorgeous big display. This is on a tablet. Of course, you can put it on your phone. Uh, no problems there. Huge, huge display. And, uh, you know, for safety's sake, you can put this in a certain location. Something you want to test. Maybe you're a little bit antsy. Don't feel safe. Put the uh, tablet there and uh, go to a safe distance and start testing. So it can come in really handy for situations like that. Overall, very, very nice to have this Bluetooth functionality. And it works perfectly. Absolutely no glitches, nothing. Sitting in AC mode right now, we have that high voltage enunciator at the top left, letting you know you're in the danger zone and 121.7 volts to RMS. And bring it over to frequency mode. It works just fine. Next up is capacitance. So first we're gonna put this into capacitance mode. There we go. Now, according to the manual, six millifarad, 6,000 microfarad is the maximum that the little V05B can handle. Don't believe everything you read. That's right. Here we go. 100 millifarad, 100,000 microfarad. Can it read it? It is thinking. And it's now in millifarad mode. Giving us that OL symbol. But wait, wait, don't despair. There you go. 96, 98, 98.16 millifarad. Good job. Oh, yeah. Diode mode is next, here we go. Starting off with the green LED. And yes, it is lit with that forward voltage drop over to the yellow. Looking good with the forward voltage drop over to the red. Yeah, so far three for three. Mr. Blue, oh, four for four. And finally the white, yeah, no worries. Man, I'm telling you, surprises like this in the Cheapo Nation put a smile on my face. Five for five in the LED illumination and forward drop department. Wow. A balmy 3.96 volts, the output voltage in diode mode. And a big shout out to Dave McKay. Thank you so much for sending in the HP B2373A. Wow. To leave auto mode, simply hit the select button once, brings us into continuity diode. Hit it again. Capacitance once more, brings us into frequency. Finally, temperature Celsius, as well as Fahrenheit, and back into auto mode. When you're in capacitance mode, sometimes you can have something called stray capacitance. And when you're trying to measure um, small valued capacitors, that can be a real nuisance. So in order to get a better measurement, it's good to be able to zero that out. And that's exactly what that zero button is for. So uh, right now we're fine. But uh, if we had any sort of inconsistency with this reading right now, I would hit the zero and it would basically rel it out. So it's giving us a good baseline to take our measurement. Really handy and uh, pretty nifty in a cheapo. Already Aphrodite continuity, my favorite time of the review, as you know. Default stock test leads, we are in continuity mode. Three, two, one. We have that nice visual as well as the audible. So not the fastest, definitely misses every other latch, but it is loud, latched, and I think really doable. You know you want it. Continuity time with the Pro Masters. Three, two, one. Definitely better. Yeah, much better. That's about a seven out of 10, maybe a 7.5. Liking it, liking it. Don't poke him, don't poke. Seventy-eight point six decibels maximum output volume in continuity. Next up is temperature mode. Now I did not get any uh, thermocouple with this meter, uh, but I'm assuming it ships with one. If not, uh, any 
standard thermocouple will do. This is just a standard cheapo you get, uh, nothing fancy. But the nice thing is the V05B does have a ambient temperature sensor, meaning that you don't have to use your thermocoupler temperature probe if you just want to get the ambient temperature. Right now you can see it is 21 degrees. And for my American friends, wait, it's to a balmy 69 in the lab slash studio slash slash. Okay. Sitting in NCV mode now, just hold down on that NCV button until you get the EF signifier and you are now ready. Let's see how we are in terms of sensitivity. One bar, so, uh, you know, uh, probably not the greatest. Eh, it's too bad. Try the same thing with the standard outlet. So there we're definitely getting some uh, much improved non-contact voltage detection. Now the adding also has that live wire feature. So if you're trying to find a live wire, um, there you go. Just need the one input into the positive and it lets you know which is live. A little awkward, mind you. Uh, you know, how useful is this going to be? Uh, Teardown time, I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at the rich meters at the same time, just to compare the two because they're so darn alike. So here we are, the rich meters on the left, the anning here on the right. Let's start off with those input jacks. They're both of the split variety, as you can see. And they do have this little interesting riser board here on the high current side. Now, unfortunately, they both utilize those ludicrously tiny fuses. Oh my God, I don't know why they, they I really, Oh, I'm not going to go there, but yeah, these are definitely hard to find. So those crazy anning fuses are 3.6 by 10.2 millimeter. So, oh gosh, why can't they stick with standard sizes? They're both 10 amp, 250 volt fuses. Now we do have an extra PTC on the anning and that is on the voltage side. We don't have anything like this on the rich meters. Moving up the board, there's that noisy relay. Noisy, noisy, noisy. At the top right, we have the ZYDC low energy Bluetooth IC. And that is what is giving us all that Bluetooth goodness. Um, the main IC is Cobb, over here is our piezo, and finally another tin can oscillator below the main IC. In terms of NCV, not too much. It's embedded. It's just a, basically a filament in between layers of the PCB, and it really doesn't do a very great job. So, uh, yeah, not the best. Overall, fairly clean looking PCB. The input jacks themselves, eh, a little dodgy perhaps. Would have liked to have seen a little bit better in terms of the overall fit and finish, but definitely seen worse. Okay, gonna put everything back together and come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the ending V05B. I like it. Yes, it is a smart multimeter that is actually not too darn dumb. The Bluetooth comes in super handy. That Bluetooth software, I cannot say it enough. It just works very, very well. Besides the Bluetooth functionality, this is a feature packed little meter. I'm talking 100 millifarad in the capacitance range. Resistance was fast to range and accurate as well. Has a lots of neat little features and overall for a true RMS 6,000 count smart meter, it's hard to go wrong. Biggest downside to the V05B is that noisy relay. Believe you me, sometimes that clickety clack, enough to drive you around the bend. But that aside, overall, it's a complete package and the Bluetooth software gives it that added boost of functionality, which comes in handy. The Anning V05B gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Great job, Anning. Not too bad for a $25, $30 multimeter. Yes, this is a great start to the cheap old realm in the brand new 2021 new year. Awesome. Thanks for watching this review. Everybody, if you haven't checked it out, check it out. The new website, keepontesting.com. That's right, keepontesting.com. It's got blog, it's got the top 10, it's got all sorts of neat little things going on, and it's going to grow, hopefully, as time goes by. Hey, thanks for watching this review. Till the next one. Keep on testing. Continuity, baby. You got it. My favorite time of the show. Uh, these are the default stock test leads that come with this V0C5. <laughs>